Why is continuous integration important for open source? Sure. So I think that continuation, continuous integration, excuse me, is really important for open source because for for two big reasons. One is speed and reliability, um, and it's really important that when you're building an open source project, because like most um, big applications are built on open source software, that those projects are going to be very reliable. You don't want that software to go down, um, and so it's really important that you're using CI to make sure that you're continuously testing those projects, making sure that there's no bugs in them, um, because if they go down, then there's all of these other applications that are dependent on them that are also probably going to go down. Um, and then the second reason is that you really want to create a lot of, um, you really want to connect your contributors as much as possible. And so um, tools like GitHub and GitLab do that for um, your source code, but then you also need to make sure that they're going to be aligned on all of the tests that you're running as well. Um, so that's kind of that second step in the process, and so it's it's important that you're using a tool like Circle CI, like something else that is, that will provide that alignment among uh, among your contributors for your tests that you're running. Mm -hmm. And how should CI and continuous delivery work for open source? Yeah, so I think the the main thing is that it, you know it's going to be really fast. You don't want people to be waiting around for their builds to run. You don't want to deal with queuing and things like that. Um, and then secondly, you want to make sure that it's really easy, and that's both for maintainers and for contributors. Um, so you really want it to be um, easy and simple for maintainers to set it up so that they're not spending a bunch of time doing it, and then it needs to be automatic for contributors. So it just needs to work. Um, no one wants to go in and think about CI configuration when you're just trying to ship a feature um, and doing pull requests and things like that. And do the CI and CD development practices help in maintaining an open source project? They definitely do. So Circle CI recently ran a an interview, or sorry, not an interview. We ran a survey with about 900 of our open source developers who use Circle CI, um, and of those, 81 percent said that it would be very difficult or completely impossible to maintain an open source project without CI. Um, so that definitely shows that like people are seeing the value of CI who are using it already for their open source projects. Um, so I think that like the more we can expand that to other open source projects, the better because you know people are seeing the value of it for sure. Mm -hmm. And so, what should open source software users look for in a CI tool? Yeah, so you know, like I was saying before, speed's very important. And so, there's a, a few things you can look for, like you know, when you're researching CI tools to to see if they're going to be fast tools like that. Um, so one of the main things is just you kind of want to go with a, a SaaS solution, so someone that's going to host your builds for you. Um, and that's just because you're going to save all of the time of setting up your own machines to run your builds. Um, and because you're using a vendor that's hosting those machines, those machines are going to be optimized for running CI builds, so they're likely going to like just run the build faster. Um, you don't have to deal with things like dependencies sitting on those machines. All of that's going to be managed for you. So that would be like the main one I would say will save maintainers, especially a lot of time. Um, and then you can also just like all of these CI tools that are um, SaaS solutions have free tiers available for open source, and they usually have a very good free offering for open source. So I would just suggest going and just trying out a few different solutions, like do some research and then try them out. Um, try to optimize your builds on a few different tools and see which one is the fastest for your project. Mm -hmm. um, and then I think. For making it easy for maintainers, there's a few things you want to look at as well. Um, so configuration as code is one of the big ones. That's just like it provides you all of the benefits of, you know, just having code in a VCS like GitHub or GitLab. Um, so it's going to give you like traceability and the changes that are being made. It's going to be open for all of your contributors to see. So if anyone's like confused about what tests are being run, you can see it in there. Um, things like that. Um, another one is uh, security, so you really want a tool that's going to manage security in your environment variables for you, um, because you, know, you have all of these people around the world contributing to this project. You want to make sure that those things are locked down, like AWS you know, um, secrets and things like that. Right. And you touched on this a little bit so far, but what are some of the best practices for setting up CI on an open source project? Yeah, definitely. Um, so secrets, like I said, that's a, that's a huge one. You want to make sure that all of your secrets are managed well by your CI tool so that you're not storing them in your source code, things like that. Um, another one would be to really leverage 
caching, and we, we see a lot of people who are using CI for open source who aren't thinking about optimizing those builds, because like they're mostly thinking about just saving time. Let's get it set up as quickly as we possibly can. Um, and then they don't really spend the time to then go back and optimize those builds with caching. Um, and tools like Circle CI, we pretty much give you all the freedom you want to uh, set up caching however you want. So um, it's not optimized when you originally start, because we want to give you that freedom to do whatever it is that you need to do to make it work perfectly for your project. So definitely, like, for anyone who's using CI for an open source project, make that initial investment of the time to go and like set up caching, set up other optimizations that that tool provides for you. Um, and then also would just be providing documentation to maintainers or and to contributors about um, the practices that you have in your CI configuration. Um, so you really don't want it to just be a black box to anyone who's coming and contributing to your project. Um, you want to have there in the readme, like let's tell the contributors about you know what kind of tests you're running, things like that, so that when they come, they know exactly what's going to happen. Um, and also even providing them some instructions on if you want to contribute to the, contribute to this project, maybe set up Circle CI or another tool for your fork of that project as well, so that before you do a pull request and like you know try to get your changes integrated into the main project, like run those tests that are going to be run on it so that you're not like wasting a whole bunch of time beforehand. Right. Well, thank you very much for talking with me today. Yeah, thank you.